Hey what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick demo in After Effects and Element 3D to practice importing 3D objects, customizing materials, and making some interesting backgrounds and environments. So we'll be making a promo clip for a juice product like this. That sounds interesting, let's get started. I'm going to start with a new composition, Full HD, 30fps, 300 frames. Now really fast here at the beginning, I'm going to click down here on our project settings. I'm using a 32 bits per channel working space, which is general, but I'm actually not going to be using a linearized working space. I don't have any linear files, so anything that was rendered from Maya or any kind of 3D app, we don't have anything that's raw. And unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, Element 3D does not support linearization. So all files going into Element 3D, if they are sRGB files, will be overcorrected if After Effects is linear the working space. So if you are working with a combination of raw or linear files along with Element 3D, you're gonna have to do your own color correction to get that in as close as you can or use some other type of tool to inverse the linearization on your Element 3D layers. For this, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna leave this off because it's gonna make everything just work a little bit more smoothly. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I want the background to kind of be plain at the beginning and then particles kind of erupt from the center and then cover the entire canvas in a new background. So to do that, we're gonna create a new solid and on the solid, we're gonna grab a, a CC particle world effect. If we scrub along here, we can see that these are just falling down. So let's go into physics and we'll change the gravity to zero and turn the radius for X, Y, and Z all to zero. Go up to longevity, we'll set that to two. And we're actually going to go all the way to the beginning here on birth rate. We'll animate birth rate starting at zero. And then by frame 10, we'll set this to 300. It's going to be a lot of particles there. Next, we're going to go into particle and change the particle type to lens convex. And when you do that, you notice everything goes away. And that's because these lens particle types will use the color of the image or the solid that you're using. So in this case, if we go to our toggle transparency, since our background is black, the particles are also black. So to fix that, we're going to grab a four color gradient, drag this on top. And now the four color gradient is allowing the color to be on top. So what I wanna do in this case, I wanna make these colors a little bit more warm. Something more like that will be good for right now. You also wanna make sure that you have motion blur on and it's on for your composition as well. This is gonna help blend your particles a little bit more. All right, so going back to particle for the birth size, we'll start this at zero. So at the very beginning, these are gonna be much smaller. And essentially that's all we have to do for our particle system. So the next thing is after around frame 50 or so, this is now our new background, but this is gonna keep moving really fast forever. So I wanna slow this down. So to do that, we're gonna pre-compose our composition and then make sure you move all attributes into the new composition. So with that done, go into our layer time and then enable time remapping. So what time remapping does, let's say at frame zero, we're still at zero. And then let's say by frame 20, I want this to be at the same position that it normally is at frame 30. So at frame 20, I simply type in frame 30 and then it speeds it up on these frames. Likewise, at the very end here, pull this last keyframe in a little bit. Instead of being at 300 at the end, let's say I only want this to be at frame 80. So then between 20 and 300, it will only go an extra 50 frames and it will just slow that down for us. All right, so the next thing I wanna to do to blend this a little bit better is add a radial fast blur. So CC radial fast blur, pull this on. And then we'll say at the very beginning has an amount of 50 and then by frame 20, maybe go up to 80 or something. It's gonna help blend it in a little bit more. That's gonna be pretty cool. All right, so the next thing we wanna do here is grab a new solid for our Element 3D scene. And we'll grab an Element 3D effect. Let's go into the scene setup. And for this, we wanna check the link in the description where you can download the models. We're gonna to go to import, and then we're gonna grab the bottle, and then these splash droplet objects. And we can import them all at the same time. Might take a second. The splash object is especially large, so it might take just a, a little bit. I'm just gonna use the default settings for each one of these, and just click okay. So if yours freezes for a second, it's perfectly normal. And these are also gonna come in pretty small, so we'll go to our group folder, and I'm gonna scale this up to 1,000%. All right, so what we have here is basically just a bottle surrounded by kind of a static splash. And then we have all these droplets. Now I separated these droplets from the main splash so we can get them to move independently. We'll use those a little later though. For now, what we're gonna do is turn the rest of these off. So turn off the splash droplets and splash main layers. Now it's not really important that this is going through the grid. In fact, I'm gonna turn off the grid and then we can just look at the object itself. 
Now, if we open up Bottle Single, you'll notice that there's several materials I've already been made. The way that you do this in Maya, for example, is to assign a new material to specific areas of the geometry. And then if you rename the shading group in Maya, Element 3D will recognize that as a separate material. So it's the only way that you can actually select different objects in Element 3D is if they're already kind of pre-selected with a different shading group in another app. Let's take a look at what we have here. We've got Juice Full. So to see that, we'll turn off the bottle. So Juice Full is juice all the way up to the top. I modified this geometry because by default, you only get kind of a half full juice, which is this layer. So we can turn off that material layer, turn on our Juice Full, and then turn on the bottle. All right, so lastly, we're going to start with the bottle. And the way that we're going to do this, if you don't have pro shaders, I think there are like some glass materials you can use, but it's fairly easy to do. All I want to do is go down to reflectivity. Glass is reflective, and we'll just pretend this is glass for this. You could do a plastic one if you wanted. We'll set our reflectivity all the way up to 100%, and then you'll notice that it's reflecting the environment. So if we click on environment here, you see it's kind of not the greatest environment for what we need. I'm going to change that by going into presets, environment, and I'll choose something like this lobby. And then we get kind of the reflections in there. If you don't want any super sharp reflections, you can blur those. They're always going to be blurred, but in this case, doesn't particularly matter. We can always swap this out later for something else. So if you want to blur the reflections on the objects, this is going to be the glossiness controls and you can just blur that. Glass though is reflective and you can see reflections in glass, in most glass. So if you wanted to adjust the glossiness, it would have to be pretty subtle. All right, so we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and then there's an option for force opacity. So we are going to have to use this so we can see our juice inside. I'll drop that down to something like 10%. All right, so now let's go up to our juice. And for juice, what I'm going to do is scroll all the way up to our diffuse color. I'm going to grab, this is kind of like an orange juice. So I'll do something like that for right now. And then juice is also reflective. It's a liquid, so we can pull that up. But the reflectivity color does have to be changed. Use that color just so we can reflect the right color. We're also going to add just a little bit of illumination. We'll use the diffuse color and just crank this up a little bit just so there's less shadows. And this is going to make our product just look just a little bit better lit. All right, so let's go up to the cap now. And these do have textures that come with them. So on diffuse, we can go to diffuse, low texture. We're going to navigate to where these are. And there are no specific ones for reflectivity. So if we go down to reflectivity, crank this up, you get to a point at 100% reflectivity, your diffuse value goes away. So in order to maintain the color, you want to copy your diffuse texture, copy, and then just paste this over the set for reflectivity. Now go down to reflectivity and you can crank this up and then you get reflections. These are quite sharp. So I'm going to go down to glossiness and just lower these. Let's say this is like a metal cap or something. If you want these to be plastic, then you can play around with the materials to achieve more of a, a plastic look. Go down to our label back. It's also a texture for this. I'm going to copy this again. I'm going to paste this in reflectivity. Now, the way that we're texturing this is a bit hacky, but it's going to work out pretty well for what we need. If you're wanting photorealistic renders, you probably aren't using Element 3D as well, which I love Element 3D. I think it's great, but there are some kind of shortcomings, especially when it comes to the material properties. Grab one for the front. Crank this up. Something more like that and I'll be all right. This is going to be okay for what we need. We will have some more lights in the scene later on. And then we can always fake it by going down to illumination and just manually like increasing the brightness of these 25 on both of these things. So there's just a little bit better lit. So if you realize that you're not getting enough light in the scene, you can always come back and kind of fake it that way. Not a good practice to do generally, but uh, we are working with a kind of a limited set of parameters with element 3d so as long as it looks good in the end that's all that really matters to tweak the opacity down here that looks a little bit better all right so we've got everything kind of thrown in there that looks all right and then we'll just click ok all right so let's go all the way to the very bottom here and then we're going to go into our group one folder and then we're going to go into particle replicator and at the very beginning we're going to change the z parameter to be very very small i'm just going to throw this into the background. So what we can do, we can have this like very far away at like 60,000. And then even when we zoom in, we just can't see it anymore. So we'll keyframe this. And then what we'll need to do at frame 20, this is gonna have to be much larger. So when we throw out the bottle that far, what's gonna happen is if we have motion blur enabled, which we do need to add here, you're not gonna see it until almost at the end there. 
and then it's going to be extremely blurry. So what we're going to do, go into your graph editor, and then here we're actually going to have this be converted into an auto Bezier spline, and then we can pull this line down, do the same thing with this one. We can ease this, shorten my work area there with the N key. So we're going to want to see that bottle pretty early on. Something more like that. It's a very, very tight curve. If I zoom in here a little bit more, it's going to be a bit easier to see. And then now this is slowing down a little bit too early, so we'll pull this up. And then it's just going to be a case of tweaking this to get the right timing. So at frame 20 here, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this forward. So it's more like that. Something more like that. And grab a new camera and then just zoom out a little bit. And then if you want to change the distance, you can just pull the camera in and out and you don't have to mess around with the keyframes as much. This is actually backwards. So what I'm going to do here, grab scene setup, go into our group folder here, and I'm just going to rotate this round 180 degrees. So it's the right way around. And there we go. So now we can see the nice, nice label in Bulgarian, I think. All right. So let's go and add in those droplets. So now for the splash, we're going to turn on the splash. This is like a, a frozen simulation. And you can see from the shape of this at the bottom, this is like supposed to be coming out of the cap. So you could totally do that if you wanted to pull this up here and have it like erupting from the cap that way. That'd look pretty cool. But what I want to do, I just want to kind of cheat this. I'm going to actually intersect this, pull this up so the cap part is hidden. We don't actually see that. Something more like that. And then it's just going to make it look like this is surrounding it. So for the poly surface here, I didn't even rename this material. We can duplicate this juice full one, to duplicate, drag this up here, and now it's the same color. This is gonna be a little bit bright. We can go to the refraction color though, we can add the deeper value to it. Value, so it just gives a hint of extra color as it's being refracted. And then for the glossiness, even though that liquids are very glossy, I'm just gonna pull this down just a little bit. So right now, this is making it look a little bit too greenish. So I'm gonna grab just a quick curves and I'm just gonna make the entire layer to slightly less green. I'm gonna blend it in a little bit better. All right, so at this point, we wanna actually have this rotated round. So I wanna go up into group one, go into rotation, and I'm going to just tilt this kind of more at an angle. I also want this to be spinning. So let's go into the Y rotation. Let's say at the very beginning, it's negative three full rotations. And then by the end here, this kind of gone back just to normal. So it's going to spin around three times. But the way that this is going to work, click U, go to our graph editor. I'm going to select both these, set them to the auto Bezier. And then at the end here, we're going to stretch this out. This is going to be very slow towards the end. It's going to slowly rotate. But at the beginning, it's going to be rotating a lot. We want the rotation to ramp up and be pretty fast and then slow down. So something like that. It's very, very fast at the beginning and then it slows down throughout most of the animation. Now for the droplets, we are actually gonna want those on a different group. The splash droplets, again, this can have that same material. So I'll just double click that. I'm gonna pull this up. These look a little large. I'm gonna scale these down, raise up the placement. Now these are gonna have to be in their own group. So we're gonna go pull this underneath until you get a red line and then just simply change the group number. So when you load those in, you'll notice that the particles are actually not animating with group one and they're just kind of in the same position throughout. So in group one on Element 3D, we are using the Z position and we're also using that rotation. So we'll go to the Z position, just key, copy these keyframes, control C, then we'll go down to group two, animate Z position, and then just paste those in. Click U to see all your keyframes. And we're gonna do the same thing with the rotation. Go into Y rotation, paste it in there. So now they're at the same rate. Kind of annoying that you'd have to switch that every time, but you could have one group as the master and then all of the other groups linked with an expression. So you only have to change one. I've done that in so many other videos, so shouldn't be too complicated to figure that out. All right, so what I wanted to do with these drawings is actually enable multi object. So just to see this more clearly, I'm going to turn off group one, and then I'm going to go into group two, particle look, multi object and enable multi object. So this is what's going to allow us to add some kind of displacement or scatter. So for displacement, so at the very beginning here, we can pull this in, maybe negative 0.5. And then by the very end, this is displaced maybe 0.25. But as it spins out and out and out, these are going to get further and further apart. You can also do some random rotation as well. We're going to have these rotate maybe one full rotation. Now for both of these channels here, I'll do one at a time. For the rotation, we'll go into the graph editor and we'll want this to be pretty fast at the beginning to match the other animations. This is going to be pretty fast and then towards the end here, it's just going to ease. Same thing for this displacement. I'm going to start pretty quickly and then it's going to ease. 
turn on group one. And I'm losing quite a lot of these because they're too high up. So I'm gonna go into the particle Y for group two and just lower these. And I think also what we can do is maybe just bump up the random rotation to two, something kind of like that. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. There's a few more things that we can do though. Grab a new light. I could grab a parallel light. Now I'll switch into two views. And I'll zoom out of this as well. So I can reorient this light. So if I want the light coming in from one angle, I could do that pretty easily like that. If I switch into a front view, we can also change the, the angle that's pointing down. Something more like that. Go back to a top view, grab another light, rotate this in so we can do more like a, a two-point lighting setup and then we can drop this down to a 50 percent or something you could also do a pretty cool depth of field thing here go into my camera enable depth of field and then just lower this focal distance yeah something like around 200 would be pretty good and then we don't have to have the f's up quite so crazy we could do something more like f-stop of four kind of still blurs parts of it or we could drop that down to like a 2.8 or something it's a little bit more blurry but that looks pretty interesting. And then ultimately here, when it comes down to the lighting, our environment lighting is not particularly accurate. I'm gonna go back down and just try to take out a bit more of this green, add a bit more contrast to that. And now you can see that as this is slowing down, the background is also going fairly quickly. So I can go to my time remap and on this last keyframe, I could say, this has to be maybe at, at around frame 60, not frame 80. That should slow down. Select this time remap, go into my graph editor, and then we can, we can ease this like we've done with the rest of these. And then right here, especially, we wanna convert that to a busy ace spline and then just kind of smooth that out. You also wanna make sure that you go back into group two. I forgot to add the X rotation there to match the other one. But uh, ultimately, this is kind of what I had in mind. Pretty quick little exercise, how you can make a background look a little bit more interesting, play around some depth of field, and just extra practice with some Element 3D objects and some basic lighting. Realistically, what you wanna do if this was more of a real life type thing. Let's say the company has multiple different flavors of this juice. You could swap out different element layers and then just do wipes between them and then the entire background changes. So maybe they do a grapefruit flavored one or maybe they do strawberry flavored or whatever. And you just have like different flashes of color and then the labels change and everything like that. You could even have the splash change and you could do it in a more dynamic way with using some mats on the 3D objects and using that with like a luma mat. But this is pretty much all I was gonna show you in this in this little tutorial here but there's a lot of things that you could do to expand upon this I'm gonna do just a few extra little tweaks to the color here you could play around with just tweaking some of the highlights I want to just add a little bit more red into it and the last thing that we're gonna do is set up a camera so the only things we need to animate here are gonna be the point of interest the position and then the focal distance so at around 20 we'll just set some keyframes where they currently are go to the very end and then just try to zoom it in kind of find a more interesting angle maybe zooming in on that label something like that I'm gonna go ahead and switch my views to look at the focal plane bring down that focal distance I'm gonna ease these with the F9 key and then at around frame 130 I'm just going to add in a supporting keyframe here just to lower this a little bit because it's a little high up kind of ease in the motion a little bit but keep the camera a little bit further down all right so here's the final result all right so if you learned something drop a like if you have a question post a comment otherwise i'll see you next time peace